Welcome to the Exercise Science Playlist, where the goal is to provide you with fitness information presented in a variable manner that you can consider and critically think about and perhaps apply or not, depending on your fitness goals and your unique characteristics. And so this video is referencing a social media post, the most reliable source of information, but I'll allow it because in this case, this post is based off many pieces of research which have been condensed by two prolific researchers so that people can very easily digest the information. And so how many times should you eat per day to lose fat or gain muscle. And to be very clear in the context of this video and the presentation of that graphic, those are two different goals. And so I touched on this in my protein hierarchy video. And importantly, remember as we go through this video, the total amount of protein that you intake over a day is more important than meal frequency. For the goal of muscle growth. But if we focus purely on the issue of meal frequency, then this graphic I think can be really useful as it places this issue on a spectrum according to people's training status. This graphic by the Alan Aragon nails the nuances of recommendations for meal frequency on measures of body composition. As with almost all applied topics in exercise and nutrition, the practical prescription ultimately will depend based on individual factors. It depends. And so this is something I say in basically all my exercise science videos. It depends. It depends on your unique needs, your goals, your characteristics. That is absolutely vital and that's absolutely supported by prolific evidence-based researchers. And so the trend you're going to see as we go through this is when it comes to fat loss, how many meals per day doesn't really matter as much compared to the goal of muscle growth, where there is a more specific recommendation given by these researchers. And it's around the three to four meals per day for muscle growth in order to get in the adequate amount of protein, other macronutrients and calories over the day, which is a recommendation that you will see within the evidence base. Again, as I touched on in my protein hierarchy video. So let's start with the novice, the deconditioned individual or the obese overweight population. For the goal of fat loss, doesn't matter how many meals per day. This population typically has goals of simply improving body composition to non-extreme degrees. Therefore, total daily nutrition trumps distribution of the constituent meals for fat loss. The focus should be on consistency and adherence to a routine that achieves the daily target. And then for muscle growth, they suggest a minimum of three meals. Regardless of population, it's implausible that rates of muscle gain will be maximized with one to two daily protein feedings. And so what he's expressing here is if you, th if you think about the amount of protein you take in a day, even if it's that reasonable recommendation that I provided to you, perhaps getting in that amount of protein in one meal a day or two meals may mean very large meals, which may be not be suitable for many people. But for other people, it may be something that they're comfortable with. So again, of course, there's nuance there. But in terms of getting in a certain amount of protein, breaking it up into three meals may be more doable if you like for many people. A case can be made for a minimum of three protein rich meals per day in the case of hard gainer novices who have a tendency to subconsciously ramp up non-exercise activity alongside increases in calorie intake. And so just to say that that hard gain attack in inverted commas is a bit of a minefield in itself when we hear this term hard gainer. But one application that the research is giving there is that this population may actually be increasing their calorie burn as they're increasing their calorie intake. So if the goal is muscle gain, for example, then they have to be very aware of that energy balance. So I just want to state here that the goals of an obese person or an overweight person looking to lose fat or a novice trainer looking to build muscle are no less important than advanced trainees. That's not what this is trying to state. It's just trying to state that perhaps it's less intricate. For example, someone who has a large amount of body fat losing some fat is less intricate a process, if you like, than a physique athlete who's looking to get to a single digit body fat percentage to have an aesthetic six pack whilst maintaining muscle mass. And so I just wanna state that when we look at these different populations. Now, population number two, recreationally fit people with normal healthy body composition. For fat loss, again, it doesn't matter. And again, when you think about fat loss, caloric deficit is the key. And I made a video very recently where I give the science of lipolysis and beta oxidation into fat loss. If you're interested in that, the one with Peter Griffin on the thumbnail. Again, the non-competitive, non-extreme leanness goals, total daily nutrition trumps distribution of meals through the span of the day. For muscle gain, again, three meals rich in protein. And so now we're gonna go to the last population, to the highly trained or the advanced individuals who are close to their potential. And so that's another reason that I want to project this to you because when we look at that spectrum, 
Training status is of course vital when we think about different fitness concepts and one of the variables that affects us is how close to our potential we are when it comes to fat loss. If someone's extremely lean, a physique competitor, there may be, it can be very hard to lose extra fat. Or if someone has built large amounts of muscle over many years, eking out extra muscle growth when they're close to their potential can be extremely difficult. In contrast to a beginner who's just started training, where of course they have a larger potential to build muscle mass as they haven't yet started to build it, or an obese person losing fat where they can create a larger caloric deficit to start and they will see large amounts of fat being lost. Physique competitors might preserve muscle in hypocaloric conditions with at least three protein rich meals per day. Advanced non-competitive trainees might not need to employ this hypothetical precaution since an edge to ensure the highest possible placing isn't on the line. Again, so that's what I'm talking about, more intricate needs to lose that body fat whilst ma maintaining an aesthetic muscle mass for the stage. But if people are not a physique competitor, that just isn't going to be a consideration. Of course, maintaining muscle muscle mass will be consideration, but not perhaps to those microscopic levels that physique competitors are going to be focusing on. And then for muscle gain, a minimum of four meals per day. For the goal of pushing the envelope of muscle gain in the face of little remaining potential in advanced trainees, the collective evidence suggests at least four relatively even distributed protein feedings per day, roughly 0.4 to 0.6 grams per kilogram per feeding. And so last footnote I want to project to you, some summary points to leave with you, for you to critically think about, and again, importantly, with all my exercise videos, I'm not telling you that you must do something or you must implement this information. It depends, it's variable in nature. Please look at it, Go through it, consider it, critically analyze it. And there may be some parts that you may want to apply. It may not. That's absolutely fine. That's really what science is, is giving you a guideline, a framework that you have to apply to your needs. Muscle gain and fat loss have divergent meal frequency requirements. For fat loss and lean mass retention, the body tends to be more forgiving, flexible with lower meal frequency, skewed distribution and narrower feeding windows with scarce exceptions, i.e. contest prep. No specific minimum number of meals applies. In contrast, maximizing rates of muscle growth requires close retention to higher frequencies of protein feeding. Three to four protein-rich meals is likely the minimum for optimizing muscle growth. Important note, total daily protein, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram. Again, please see this video, my protein hierarchy, where I discuss the amount of protein to take in more depth where you can see some of the research articles, the meta-analysis that come to that conclusion will always be of primary importance. Distribution of the constituent doses of secondary importance regardless of goal. Again, total amount of protein intake more important than meal frequency. But if you are thinking about meal frequency, then most certainly three to four meals a day is something we do see in the evidence base. Doesn't mean you have to eat three to four meals. You may eat less, you may eat more depending on how you apply it to your, your lifestyle. I hope this was helpful for you on your fitness journey. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.